I am a cardiologist, but you may ask, why should I come here and talk to you about an area which is not even the area of my specialization? I have lost several friends, at least three people that I know very closely who passed away in London that way in Nalaharani. And I know many, many other friends who have lost their family members and their respective uh, friends. So this really was a very important topic that I was thinking of talking to all of you and learn myself. And when uh, Mufti Saab asked me to talk about it, I, I felt very relieved that at least there will be some outlet that I can talk to you about it. So, Basically, so uh, from Islamic perspective, we know that health is an important atiyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And protection of health is extremely important. Can you hear me? Okay. So, and that is basically a, almost a fault for us to take care of our health. And you probably are already aware of this famous hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who said, and the translation reads that no disease that Allah has created for which He has not made a cure that is known to some people and unbeknownst to other except death. So there is a cure for every disease. Our job as human being, as healthcare provider, is to find the cure for that disease and try to prevent that disease from spreading. <clears throat> Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu also realized even 15, 14, 1500 years ago that he instructed us not to travel to an area which was afflicted by disease such as um, uh, plague at that time that was Fahun. So plague was one of the things that was going around at that time and also protection in both from the hadith and the quran also emphasizes upon the protection of health and also you cannot you know cause your own death by neglect because if you go with the first principle that if there is a cure for all the diseases you have you're obliged to protect your health and you're also obliged to protect the health of other community members. You should not be the cause of disease and death for other community members. And the Sharia viewpoint now, it has been approved, the experts have examined it and approved by qualified expert that it is permissible to get a COVID-19 vaccine. So if anybody tells you otherwise, they are not telling you the truth. So this is very, very, very important to know that this is the majority of the ulama's have reached this conclusion. Okay. Next. So, um, what are the symptoms of this disease? We all know that you can have fever, cough, some people have shortness of breath, and these symptoms, not everybody will have all the symptoms that are listed. It, some may have one, others may have two, three, and some people may have just mild, you know, feeling of unease or ill health, that's all. But the combination may happen, fever, cough, shortness of breath, chills, muscle pain, sore throat, and new loss of taste or smell, congestion or runny nose, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. So 
a person may have one or combination of these uh, symptoms. Next. So, when do symptoms of COVID-19 appear? So, if you feel that you have been exposed and you develop a fever or other symptoms, two to 14 days, it takes at least two days for the symptoms to appear, but ranges mainly between seven to 14 days is the range. But as early as two days, you can develop the symptoms. So you have to be very careful with that. Next, please. So there is a concept of herd immunity. So what that means is that if you have most of the population get immunized, the spread of contagious disease is contained. So if these two individuals have the disease, and if the majority of them are immunized, so only maybe from two to let's say three individuals in that site will develop the disease. So this is a mass of people uh, who have to develop the disease before it creates a herd immunity. So in other diseases, 70% is the number that people uh, get. But they are still examining for COVID-19. There is no magic number. So there is a large number of population. If they get the disease, then you get the herd immunity. And that means, you know, you can lower your guards a little bit. Next, please. So if this only some of the population get immunized, then the disease spreads like a contagion. So these are two infected individuals. They infected the entire community. And you may have heard these incidences where people gathered in number and all of a sudden when they went back to their respective communities they spread the disease in a lot of patients a lot of people next so i'll go over quickly some definitions what is a bacteria bacteria is one cell which is alive and requires food for growth and it produces waste products and it also reproduces by division. Viruses are just a particle of, some people say it is an inert particle, but it does have DNA and it does have some characteristics, but it does not consume any energy. It does not produce any uh, waste product. And, and it does not, it, the DNA resides uh, in the nucleus of the cell. So you know the outer membrane of the cell, then there is a cytoplasm, and the inner, where all the action takes place is the nucleus. So the DNA resides within this nucleus. Next, please. Then, you know, you may have heard about epidemic, pandemic, endemic. What are these meaning? So pandemic is when it is involving the disease involves the entire world and irrespective of geography or, or, or anything else. Epidemic is only when it involves a certain area, a certain region. And endemic, when the disease is present in the community, it may be just like flu. Flu is always present. So, you know, but most people don't get it, but it is there in the community. Next, please. So, uh, if you look at the history, uh, the three to nine pandemics occurred in the 18th century, four in the 19th century, and three in the 20th century. And we hope and pray to Allah that this will be the only pandemic for this century, inshallah. Next one. So, what is the vaccine? What have they done, really? Vaccines have help eliminate, eradicate some of the diseases from the earth. Polio has been, has been eliminated in US in 1979 and in the world about two years ago. Smallpox was eliminated, 19, eliminated in 1980. We were a family of eight and my oldest sister I mean, we, uh, she developed smallpox and she died from that. The mortality rate was 35% for smallpox. So it's a highly, uh, 
you know, it killed a lot of people. Smallpox, if you, those of you who are from India, Pakistan, you know that when this epidemic came, it used to wipe out the entire villages in that rural area. Next one, please. So, what are the benefits of COVID-19 vaccine? It prevents you as an individual from getting the disease. So there are two common uh, uh, vaccines that are available that people are getting. One is Moderna and the other is Pfizer. By the way, the person who has developed Moderna vaccine, husband and wife, they are Muslims from Turkey. So, Alhamdulillah, that due to their efforts that this vaccine came, and of course, and then Pfizer vaccine is about 95% effective. And it prevents from the spread of the disease, and also it contributes to herd immunity, and it's, it prevents spread and mutation. So, so there are some changes if the, if the virus has some changes, it prevents that also. So, in other words, there are two, uh, in England, there is this, there is some mutation in the virus and it has become more infectious. But they are saying that this vaccine is effective for even those, uh, for those, for that kind of mutation. Next, please. Next, please. So, how does this vaccine, this is just a little bit technical, but it's important to know. How does the vaccine, how does the vaccine work? So coronavirus has certain feature on the surface of it that can recognize it. It's called as protein S or S protein. So what we do is in the, in the vaccine, it tells the body via the messenger RNA, it tells the cells to produce that fake S cells. So now you have the fake S cells in the body. So the body thinks, oh, there is some kind of invasion from outside. This, there's a virus coming in. So it, it fools that system to produce antibodies against that uh, protein S. So those antibodies, they, and if next time you really get the virus, these antibodies, they go just like soldiers, they go and surround it and kills that virus right there and then. So you do not get that infection. Or if you even get the infection, it is not as severe as it should have been if you did not take the vaccine. Next one. And, vaccine, and the, the fake cells that it produced, the fake protein, protein S, that degenerates and it dies away by itself. It does not leave any long standing, it doesn't cause any long standing harm or anything like that. So, uh, some of the, we already went over it. Next, please. So, are the vaccines, now there are certain question format I have put here, and I'm sure you will have more questions so you can ask at the end. So, are the vaccines safe? So now, up to date, I think it's 28 million people have been vaccinated. And Alhamdulillah, there have not been any reports of vaccine-related deaths directly. The people have died. But if you look at the patient population or the population, if there are 28 million people and in that age group, that advanced age group, the few hundreds are going to die over a few months or few, a year period. That is just the nature of the, actually there is a number, 85 percent, 85 aged or more, 15 percent will die within a year. So there will be deaths. Now, some people would try to confuse you and say, see, this patient got the vaccine and 10 days later he died. It is possible, but the possibility of the vaccine causing death is extremely low. The number two point to remember is, there is a uh, anaphylactic reaction. This is a severe form of allergy where if you take any vaccine or any medicine, you know, one of the common medicine that people with blood pressure use is called lysinopol. If you take it, you can go in a shock. And the body response is very uh, rapid. If it is untreated, you can die from it. 
But how how often does that happen? 0.00001%. However, people who are against the vaccine, they will tell you that 0.0001%, but if you multiply it by the population of the United States, let's say is 330 million. So even 100 people die, it is no big deal because People die from other diseases, people die from other vaccines and other medicines with the number will be the same. So to exaggerate that, people sometimes say that. And it is not in this medicine also. This happens in the stock market and other areas also. People quote, you know, absolute number to scare people. Or worst case scenario, they may quote like, I, I also saw that rumor too that uh, something like to, they relate to a tragedy for example in five years time three thousand people let's say three thousand people will die equivalent to what people died in terrorist attack at uh, at uh, you know 9 11. so to make people afraid of something people compare it with tragic events in the past so just don't listen to all this noise just it is there, there is a risk, no question. Anything that you do in life has risk. But the, at what cost? You are eliminating the disease. You are helping prevent the spread of the disease, prevent deaths, which is a much larger number. Okay, next. Can the vaccine itself cause an infection? The answer is absolutely not. Because these are not live viruses and which can cause an actual infection. And as I said earlier, the messenger RNA is injected and then after it has done its work by faking that protein, S14, it dies itself. Next one. Can you get COVID-19 despite taking a vaccine? Vaccines take some time to act. So if you get the vaccine now, you can get an infection if you, you know, in a week or two weeks or three weeks after the vaccine. But the, the anti antibody levels in your body is going to go up gradually. And after a few weeks, it will be maintained that way. So in that period when it is going up, there is a small possibility that an individual can get an infection. Next. Should I get a vaccine if I already got the virus? An answer is emphatic yes. However, you may defer for a month, for up to three months to allow other deserving people to get the vaccine. However, the expert recommend that you can take the vaccine even after you've had the disease. Next. Does the vaccine changes person's DNA? This is again another rumor going on that your DNA will be changed and your children will become monkeys or something like that. Actually, this is funny. I mean, funny but serious. My nephew called me yesterday. Her daughter is in the in, in university and they were going to vaccinate her. And he asked me, what is the effect on future her uh, fertility once she gets married, inshallah, and then have children? Well, nobody knows that only Allah knows that. However, the science tells us that there is no significant effect on, on future fertility. Now, if somebody is, is pregnant now, we don't know the effect on that person. But future fertility, we don't know, and most likely there is not significant effect. Okay, next one. So these are the series of questions people have asked. Uh, how did the vaccine develop so quickly, right? So normally when you, when the FDA or NIH uh, conducts trial, it takes years for the results to come out, right? So what they did was, number one, the vaccine, the technology that they used was already pre-existing. The messenger RNA-based technology was already existing. What they did is they just trained it against coronavirus and that got, they conducted all the steps that are taken in clinical trials were taken. Uh, there was an international, there was an independent Data Safety Monitoring Committee. The membership consists of 
The, invest, the investigators are not a part of the members. Usually it is it will be an attorney in that community, a community church member or a member of faith group. There will be some ethicists in that committee. And, and generally, the participant of the study, those who have uh, in, interest in that study are not part of the study. So they are totally independent. And if they feel that this vaccine or a drug is not being, is causing more harm, they can stop the study and nobody can do anything to them. So this is very, very important to know. So this is, is an independent committee that oversees that. Uh, so what they did was they facilitated this whole process. So there is two parts to any study. One is the administrative part. Uh, which, which involves a lot of bureaucracy and, and processes and the other is actual you know administration of the vaccine and follow-up so the administrative part is the one that they have really really expedited that through the process of internet and social media and they recruited patients the patient recruitment was very quick so this process got very quickly and alhamdulillah we have at least two or three vaccines that are available uh, three vaccines are available Two are already approved for emergency use, and the third one will soon, Johnson Johnson vaccine will be soon available. The two vaccines that are available, they have a problem, logistic problem, because they have to be stored in very uh, cold temperature. The one by J&J &J that has come out just recently, uh, their efficacy is a little bit less, uh, quite a bit less, 66%, but for third world countries, it does not require any storage, number one. No, you don't need a deep freezer, you don't need electricity or anything like that. Number two, that it is a single dose. So, so there is some hope even in third world countries, people who cannot and it will be much cheaper. So the governments and countries can use those vaccines in places where there is absolutely no, uh, you know, they cannot afford it. So basically that is next one. How long does the immunity last? And this, I took it from New York Times. Uh, they quoted scientists that it, takes, it lasts for about eight months after infection. Most people still have enough immune cells to ward off the virus. However, even if those who have recovered from, uh, or people who have recovered from COVID-19, they have powerful and protective killer immune cells, even when the antibodies have gone. So, you know, the worst case scenario would be that it will last for eight months and best case scenario is many, many years to come, inshallah. Next one. And we talked about can pregnant women take the vaccine? There is limited data available based on animal studies. Uh, however, there are studies that they are being planned that they will do it in even pregnant women. And both vaccine manufacturers are monitoring women who got pregnant during the trial. While they were getting the vaccine, they got pregnant. They are very closely being monitored. And data on breastfeeding women is lacking. So we have to wait for that to come out. Next, please. So people will ask, what about if my uncle has a cancer or has you know, other disease that can affect the immune system? Number one point is that they are at very high risk for developing the disease. So for that same matter, they talk to their oncologist or hematologist and check with them that whether they can take the vaccine. In all likelihood, they should be. Next, please. So now I had the second vaccine. Do I still have to wear a mask? The answer is absolute yes, because Asymptomatic carriers are well known to carry the disease, uh, the virus, and they can pass. I may be immune to myself, but I can carry the virus and pass it on to person next to me who has not been immunized. So it is very, very critical that despite your immunization, you should wear your mask, you should maintain social distancing, and you should do the, you know, the, the all the other maintaining nine feet or six feet sorry and hand hygiene you know 
We as Muslim are supposed to wash our hands how many times? I mean, this has been emphasized to, of course, in the, when we do the wudu, we wash our hands, we put water in the nose. And now I was thinking, there is a hikmah in that. I mean, this virus can go through the nose, through hand touching, through the nose, through mouth. I don't know about here, but these are the common ways the virus can enter your body. So if we are observing our, you know, religious, plus when you eat, you're instructed to wash your hands before you eat and wash your hands after you eat. So that is so much wisdom in that. And of course, face mask. Excellent. So, yeah, this is the same thing I said. Avoid close contact with anyone that has fever and cough. And there's some studies from China, they're saying that the disease is spread through frozen food. So it should be thoroughly cooked meat and eggs. Next. So in conclusion, vaccination is an important tool in fighting the epidemic. It reduces transmission infection. It prevents getting an infection and prevents death from infection. Vaccines have eliminated multiple diseases like smallpox and polio. They have been eliminated completely. And diphtheria, measles, mumps and rubella has gone down. It is, you know, minimal numbers now. And that too, in a very, it's a very small number, sometimes single digits, sometimes double digits. So we know that medicine has progressed. And as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that every disease has a cure. So thank Allah and thank to these scientists, they have developed these vaccines. Never before in the history of mankind have they been able to tackle such a, such, such a kind of disease in such a short period of time. And inshallah, we'll see the result. By the way, in our hospital, Miami Valley Hospital, we used to have like seven, eight floors were, reserved, were full of patients of COVID-19. And now, alhamdulillah, we only have two floors. But again, I will emphasize upon all of you and remind myself, never to let go your guard. And one more last thing. With this COVID-19 vaccine, because of the social isolation and, and, and cleaning your hands and all that, influenza virus is almost gone. It is very, this year they were saying in samples, it is very, 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 very low numbers now. So at least there was something, a, a blessing in disguise, I'd say. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And if you have any questions, please, you can do the sunnah and ask me or even now. Yes. There was a question that was asked. Is there any age requirement or any age limitation? So the, the, the vaccines have not been studied under age 16. So if, you know, obviously we cannot recommend it to patients, to, to, to uh, children yet. However, the study will address that. They will do further studies in that area. Yes, sir. Uh, this technology, the MMRA, uh, you said it's been around for a long time. But uh, not a long time, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it right. has been. For a while. Yeah. But as far as I know, it has been, never been used on humans before. And that's, I think, what makes people very wary about it. That's why they sir. are not sure about these long side effects right. what can happen later right. so one thing can the messenger uh, can this vaccine change your dna the answer is no right. because the dna resides in the nucleus and the messenger rna can go outside in the cytoplasm so scientifically so far we do not have any evidence that it can change your dna I can understand, see there are two groups of people that are out there. One group of people are the ones that have, you know, genuine concern. It's a new disease, a new vaccine, it came out so quickly and so on and so forth. I can understand their misgivings and, their, and they, those people need to be reassured. However, there is another group of people that they are dead set against any vaccine. 
And my problem is with them because, I mean, Allah has given you aql. Use that. Use that and then, and then decide. So, our practice, I mean, we unfortunately, polio vaccine, polio disease, unfortunately was the last places where it existed was in Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Nigeria, northern part of Nigeria, which is Muslim dominated, and in Aliga, which is the center of, in India, which is the center of Muslims there. So, all these pockets where people have spread the rumor that, that you know, that may affect your fertility. So those kind of things have to be fought and, and, and explained to the people. There's two yes. more questions. Yes. If you're feeling sick, can you get the vaccine while being sick? So, so what kind of, I mean, if you are sick in the sense, if you feel that you are having fever, cough, these symptoms that I've outlined, then no, I think you should go to your doctor, talk to them and and you should hold, hold off vaccine at that point in time. And another one is, some people say that there's tracking devices in the vaccines. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> no, there is no evidence and there's absolutely no, there is no evidence of any, uh, any fertilization, I mean, sterilization. That is a major rumor that goes around. There is absolutely no evidence. Doctor, you don't know the, on the long run. Oh, Allah, Allah, the sabab, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you have to. Problem. But the thing is, you go what you see now. What happens when you drink water off the tap or the chemicals that are spread in your house, how dangerous they are? They are probably much, much, much more dangerous than a, a vaccine, my humble opinion, based on the evidence that we see in science and all that. The fumes that we inhale, if you go to Lima, I don't know if you've been there, there is this uh, big chemical factory. I used to go there every week and my whole car would be just full of fumes and you could smell the acid inside your lungs. And if somebody does a study there, I'm sure they will find more instances of cancer there and more both that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, there is a risk, but the risk is much lower, much, much lower than people think. What are the risks, you know? No, I mean, unknown risk. Unknown, unknown risk, I mean, there is a risk of everything that you do in life. If you walk outside, if there, there is a risk of car running over you. I mean. Yeah, but that's not very convincing though. That. Right, but yeah. that is what I'm saying. The risk is exceeding. If you fly in a plane, there's a more chance of dying there than dying from a vaccine. The risk of death is extremely, extremely, extremely low. I mean, they have done now, you know, and these are tens and tens of thousands of patients that they have studied the vaccine. And now we have experienced, of course, 28 million. If this was killing people, this would be all over the news, right? Supposedly. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, this is, there, is that all? Okay. There's another yes. one. Uh -huh. Do you have to test negative before taking the vaccine? I, I don't have the direct answer to that, mm -hmm. but if I think about it, negative there are two types of things that you say if you are virus is negative then you should not but if the antibodies are present i mean if the virus is positive then you should not but antibodies if they are there then you can so but this is my answer and please don't consider this as uh, you know you should talk to your physician for a specific this is not an advice to treat or prevent it you know but contact your physician, individual physician, because they know your health best. I'm sorry, what was the question there? If you're negative, can you take it? So, so, the, so the question is that if you test positive for the disease, okay. that's what I'm understanding. If you're positive, he, antigen is positive. He asked if, um, he if you need a test negative before getting the vaccine. No, so you don't need a test to be negative. 
So you just go and get the vaccine. If that's, that's a very simple thing. So you don't need a neg negative test. But what the hint was that if you are positive, there is an antigen present. If there is a virus present, if there's evidence of a virus, active virus growing infection, if you are having symptoms, you should avoid the vaccine at that point in time. However, if you have antibodies against the virus, then you can take the vaccine. All right. Okay. Mukti Sahib, Okay. Can you give me one more? Yes, please. Yes. How accurate these PCR tests? I hear they're like 90% really give you false positive. Is that true? 90% false positive? Some people say that. No, no, no. no. That's not right. I don't know the specific numbers. Yes. But it's not 90%. That's for sure. But so. you don't know how much. Right? No, I don't know. I don't know the, honestly what is uh, positivity rate. False positive 90%. They will not approve any test with a false positive of 90%. I mean, why would you do the test? No, but exactly. Because the person that uh, invented that method, he said that should not be used as a measure to test something like that. Right. Right. Okay. Just a couple of